Let's go. Now let's get some other uh, topics right now uh, for uh, this edition here of the Metal Steel Podcast. As uh, we continue to keep it moving along uh, right now, as uh, we are in, in, in here. Also, let's all look at two right now uh, for this. Uh, as reported by Brian Diarro of, of CBS, who uh, writes for the National Football League, Steelers were traded for inside linebacker Joe Schober, uh, formerly of the Cleveland Browns, and just as of recently with Jacksonville uh, Jaguars uh, going into the season. Joe Schober, he is a, a former pro bowler with the Browns back in 2017. And you look at some of the highlights in his uh, career right now with everything going on. In uh, three out of his uh, four seasons, I mean, out of his five seasons in his NFL career, he has led his team in total tackles. Uh, that was each back in 2017 and the last two seasons in his career. And I mean, you also look at this guy right here. What's one of the also special capabilities about this guy? This guy can play coverage too. I mean, when you look at it, I mean, he's had a career high four interceptions in his last year with the Cleveland Browns. So you got someone that could help ball hawk, I mean, with this uh, Steelers uh, secondary. I'm not saying I'm going to ask this guy to play at the pass coverage, but he has to drop back. It sure would definitely help out guys like a Carl Lemons. I mean, right there, if he's going to be helping out one of the safeties or Mika Fitzpatrick. And then, of course, I mean, right now, too, Cam Sutton. Cam Sutton, there's a speculation right now or thoughts. Should he also be that nickel corner? I mean, that slot corner going into this uh, year. I mean, Antoine Brooks right now, he is the number one uh, nickel cornerback. But then again, on the left and right side of the corners, too, once again, it is Joe Hayden at the left side and Cam Sutton at the right hand uh, side going in here. Now, I mean, Joe Schoer, I mean, when you look at Everything right now, the Steelers transactions, I mean, throughout this process. I mean, the last six weeks, the Steelers have had former Pro Bowler and, and guard Trey Turner. Pro Bowlers, uh, Trey Turner, outside linebacker, Melvin Ingram, and, of course, recently inside linebacker, Joe Sherbert. Uh, their current cost against this year's cap right now is $10.36 million, and it cost the team only a six-round pick in 2022 for the next year. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty uh, decent right there, especially for a team who started off like around 30, over $34 million in the hole, I mean, to begin this offseason. I mean, a, a team, you get reminded why the Steelers not do guaranteed contracts that much. And you see why. I mean, the method to their madness. I mean, of course, we got T.J. Watt where they get into a little bit later on, but I think it is methodically done. I mean, that's what you, I think. Maybe that's the way they, they they like this as their loophole right there. I mean, obviously, T.J. Watt, his contract right now, even if they do give him a new deal, the guarantee money ain't going to have an effect that much on this year's uh, cap. It'll be for the next four or five years, whatever they do to extend him, because he's looking for – uh, guaranteed money right now. And the guys who are leading the pack in the edge rushers, I mean, the top five right now is Joey Bosa of the Chargers at $78 million, Cleo Mack of the Bears at $60 million, Trey Flowers of the Lions at $50 million, uh, Miles Garrett of the Browns at 50 and of course, last but not least, Demarcus Lawrence of the Dallas Cowboys at $48 million uh, right now. And I think uh, that is uh, pretty huge right now when you look at it. But, I mean, let me, let's be honest, too. I mean, we talk about, like, some of the stuff, I mean, that's been going on in the offseason right now. I mean, you've got a guy in Devin Bush who's coming from uh, knee uh, recovery, knee surgery. I see if he'll still be able to hold his weight. But, I mean, Robert Spillane, too, I'm not going to lie to you. As nice as it was to have him – in that stretch run for what he played uh, last year, I mean, starting when you look at it, I mean, last year, uh, and when he uh, came in and did what he had to do, I mean, starting for seven straight games, he was placed on injured reserve day before the Buffalo game. 
I, I'm not gonna lie to you. Spillane, I mean, when he was healthy, he did he did great. The only problem is I don't see this guy as a long term starter. I really don't. I mean, of course, he has flash in the pan with that uh, nice uh, stuff tackle against the Baltimore Ravens, I believe it was, or the Titans, excuse me, the goal line uh, stance. I think it was against uh, Derek Henry, I want to say. But, yeah, I mean, I'm not really impressed with him as far as, like, in a long-term hold is what I'm trying to say. Because the, the bottom line is this. You need someone that's going to be available that you can count on. I mean, yeah, injuries are going to be happening, but I, I definitely want to, like, you know, like, make sure you have a little bit more of a solid background right now. Because, listen, I mean, the, the minimal amount of games that Phil Silver has able, been able to start was four. That was back in his rookie season. But outside of that, I mean, the lowest amount of games that he, was, that he started was 13, uh, which was back in 2018. Other than that, I mean, three out of his five seasons, he has started every game. Been available? I mean, you got a guy who can play pass coverage right here. I mean, for the most part. Ain't afraid of force fumbles, too. I mean, this is a pretty rock-solid piece, I think, which should uh, pay off and add some significant depth right now to this inside linebacker core. And a lot of people... Get reminded why the Steelers right now. I mean, they continue to prove why they don't have to spend a lot, but they can still get some nice gap filling pieces to keep them inside for not only a playoff, but a possible Super Bowl run when they have the legitimate team put together. It just they 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 uh, they keep their poise and they find their right people, right place, right times, and a lot. And I think it's just amazing. I mean, when you when people want to, like, kind of, like, uh, get a little concerned with Kevin Colbert, and I've been one of many critics, don't get me wrong, in the last recent memory, but Colbert, too, when you got a guy like Omar Khan, too, who could help negotiate these deals, you get reminded how significant they are to this franchise. And I am so glad that early in the year, I mean, him possibly going to the Detroit Lions was a total baloney right there. Totally blown out of proportion. Did not hold any significance or serious weight of that matter. Uh, when uh, Dale Lally uh, asked Tom about Schober uh, earlier, he said he could not comment at the time. But for right now, we have learned uh, what number will he be wearing? Well, it'll be number 45 this year uh, for the time being. Uh, he was not permitted to practice yesterday. But... And at the same time, too, he has a career high of 140 total tackles 2017, six quarterback hits in three seasons uh, apiece back in 2017, 18, and 2020. And uh, that, that, that's about it. But right now, I mean, uh, I mean, like I said, I already mentioned that Ben Roshberg, he's be playing uh, next week uh, versus the Lions right now. And also, too, let's start out some more uh, signing outside of uh, Sober. Uh, Teresa Varley of the Steelers, who writes for him a lot of times, uh, also mentioned the Steelers have signed guard Malcolm Pridgeton, Malcolm Pridgeton, who entered the NFL as an undrafted free agent uh, with the Texans, but was released prior to the season, went on to be signed to the Browns practice squad. He signed a future contract with the Browns in the 2020 season, but opted out uh, last year. Uh, prior to the season, it was released this past February. Uh, Pritchard, he played on two Big Ten championship teams in 2017 for 2018 for Ohio State, playing every game those two seasons and starring 14 while leading the team and snaps played with 1,170. He missed the 2016 season with an injury. His college career began at Nassau uh, Community College, where he played two seasons uh, 2004, 2015, before he transferred to Ohio State. And also, too, uh, speaking of which, earlier in the week, they have also signed uh, running back uh, Pete Guerrero out of uh, Monmouth. Monmouth. He originally came to Monmouth to be part of the track and field team and then take up football until he had finished his first year. 
He played two seasons, and then Strangers decided to clear for the NFL draft and went undrafted. Jets uh, signed uh, Guerrero as an undrafted free agent, spent the 2020 season on and off the Jets roster. But Guerrero's addition is a reaction to continuing injury concerns on the Steelers running back depth chart. He'll be wearing James Connors, uh, former number 30 right now. Uh, let me know what you think right now. Uh, we're uh, moving along here uh, on this edition here of the Mount Steel uh, podcast right now. Uh, once again, uh, what do you guys think of the move? Uh, Joe Schobert, how much uh, will this be uh, significant? Because I, I got to tell you right now, I mean, when you look at, I mean, for this part, I mean, don't forget a year ago, too. I mean, the Steelers had Avery uh, Williamson, too. Don't forget. I mean, uh, which they got, I think, via trade during the 2020 uh, season. I believe he came over from the, the Jets. And, and in that year with the Steelers, don't forget, uh, he had 52 total tackles right there in that in that season. Uh, 37 uh, with the Steelers, uh, 15 assisted. I mean, for that year. And when you uh, look at it too, I mean, he, he had, so he had a total 111 total tackles right there. I mean, playing in four out of eight games. I mean, eight games starting for four of them, two quarterback hits. I thought he was uh, pretty uh, decent, pretty solid. Had all three tackles for loss with the Steelers uh, last year. So uh, he he's no he's no longer with the team for right now. But to be honest, you too, when you look at how they played against the Browns too, I mean in the playoff game. Listen, I'm not sure if it made sense to keep him around anyway. I mean it's going to be a lot of money they had to free up. But let's be honest, you once again the defense was piss poor in that Browns game, the wild card game. You cannot be having that because I that team, yes, they were starting to slide, I mean, very uh, noticeably late in the season. I mean, outside of just watching football team, you talk about the Bills, the Bengals, and then the Colts, and then once again, the Browns. But it, it just, it was not the same defense. We had the injuries accumulated right there, missing Devin Bush, Robert Spillane right now. How much, I mean, will this be able to help out as a bigger, uh, significant boost. So we'll get back to that another time. Oh, yeah!